Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, there? Yay! No. All right, so that's working. I think I got to figure out how to turn <laughs> off my wacky background, though. Jeez, Louise. Because it's like going on your face right now. <laughs> I was just like yeah, hanging I'm out. Hoping I get, um, get connection. Playing around. Uh, hold on. How do I change my... <laughs> This virtual background. Okay, I found it. Hold on. None. There we go. <laughs> so I was just having too much fun with the um, Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> yeah, just trying to set things up. <laughs> I'm just like... It looks cool. I mean, it's on your face though. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how I was like doing this like mime show yeah. stuff. Anyway, going crazy. All right. Well, hey. How's your? Are you in San Jose? Hi. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm in San Jose. Okay, I got a question for you. Let's see. Should we talk about your upcoming fight first and how your camp is going, and then? Um, so you're scheduled to fight actually, on the 25th, right? Actually, yeah. Well. Uh, um, it's not going to happen. It's not? Okay. Um, they had the, the, the no, we just kind of like made that, um, like just decided that maybe, I think it was when, um, we just hadn't like really fully been in it's just cause we were trying to play things out, um, day by day. But then once the gym closed, like it just kind of didn't give me any options. Cause I had already decided to like do my full fight camp out here and it was just getting started and then they closed everything out. So it affected me big time. I was like thinking, you know, we'll see how things play out. I don't think it's going to happen. And then now Dana's like, no, it's going to happen. And I'm just like, I'm not, um, you know, we don't have the coaching staff. I would hate to go out there and like try to represent being a part of a new team and like have a half ass performance, you know? Um, I think it's just, uh, it was the right decision for me to pull from it. Cause, cause it was, you know, you're not able I to really train. want to put in the work and with the transition. Yeah. And, we tried, but it's just, it was just not working out. There was a lot of things that were like closing out. We were trying to find different locations to even just like secretly train or just like whatever, whatever we can. It just was not happening. Things were going on. We were trying to see how things unfolded day by day. And then they, um, once they extended like the quarantine for the rest of the month, then that's where we're like, okay, there's no way that this is going to happen. That you're going to run a guess, fight camp in a quarantine. <laughs> yeah, well, on top of that, I was just thinking, you know, there's no way these fights are going to happen. Like, I mean, the whole world's affected by it, you know? And, like, um, they know why. Like, if there's any man that can make this kind of happen, <laughs> every Dana. Dana can, they'll scrap Move heaven and earth. Things happen if they wanted to. But I, I just... Which I just, I don't know. I just seemed like it was just was not. I was just like, okay, they're going to write it to the rules off. Once we seen those three fight events got canceled and we seen Khabib got stuck, I was like, okay, if they can't make that fight happen, then there's no way they're going to bother trying to make this. But he's doing it. <laughs> I just I just can't, like, you know, as much as I'd want to. It actually makes me a little bit depressed, but I think it's the best decision for me to make. What do you think about the news that Dana White came out with that he's trying to find a private island now? <laughs> To host the fights? I mean, Does that I just sound like Fantasy Island. Yeah, I think, it, dude, that'd be just like crazy, man. It's just, it, it's just the way things are unfolding, especially during this time, you know, with everything that's going on in the world to just scramble. I mean, I, I love it and I appreciate it, but it's just like, it's hard for me to not think the, you know, there's just so much going on and it would just, I would hate to like, it's great because it's almost like some kind of light in this darkness that's going on. So it'd be great to be able to have, you know, a sport there, you know, to help us feel better and entertain about the chaos that's going on in the world. And, and I think that's awesome. But I mean, for me, it's a little, it's hard because I mean, this is, this is, you know, to combat sport, it's, it's a dangerous sport if you go in there untrained, you know, but if you're trained there and you're ready for whatever happens and, you know, it's okay. But, um, there's just a lot of measures that go in there, you know, to, to go in there. It's not like I'm not a fighter. It's not like I don't know how to fight, but I would think that with all of this, you know, me making a new transition and, 
you know, going in there and giving another like, you know, it, it's just, I, I don't know. I want to be the best me out there. And that's something like making that transition to, to AK where I was like, man, I really want to show the best of me and go out there and just enter the chaos. I just have to really just kind of look at things. And I think it's just kind of the, the right thing for me. It was a really hard decision, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and this kind of, so this kind of goes to like, because he's, uh huh. Sorry. It's like, there's like a lag because of the connection. Sorry. I think there's a lag. I might have to, I mean, I don't know if we ended up freezing, but I might have to like just move it in because I'm outside because um, I wanted to have like better lighting. Um, yeah, it might be I like if you're on your cell from, phone like, plan, it might be the lag. And maybe if you move to Wi-Fi, it might be better. I don't know. No, I have it on Wi-Fi, but it just might not be, you know, like I said, I'm on my parents' house. They don't have like the best, you know, Wi-Fi because we don't really use oh, it. that's so. cool. We're so you look great. The lighting is really good. I just like, there's a lag. So sometimes the audio drops out or sometimes it's like, like yeah. So like the audio keeps dropping out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. But anyway, so, so can, what, you're, what you're saying, it no, it's a, no big deal. To, like the biggest questions the fans keep asking, which is, are you leaving team alpha male and moving to AKA now? It sounds like that's kind of what you're saying, right? Right. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, for sure. I actually had left Team Alpha Male last year. For March. Tiger Muay Thai? So um, you? there was a lot of things going on with training. Um, I hadn't decided yet. Um, I just wasn't, uh, uh, there was a lot of changes that were going on at the gym that like kind of just, it was time for me to move. I was trying to kind of like stick it out, figure things out. Um, I had one of my main coaches that I was kind of really following and um, he was kind of set to open his gym, but it's just, it was really hard for me to sit around and, or like really figure things out or try to do solo training until we can build something or figure things out. And um, I just, you know, I need a team, you know, I need, I need a solid team. I need people around me. And it would be really hard to really figure that out and like put that up together on my own. Um, so ultimately the, the decisions, like, I think, I think it's time. It's time to come back home. You know, it's my hometown. And then you're from San Jose, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was born and raised in San Jose, dude. My attitude and every persona that they see coming out, that's, that's all, that's, that's all from here, from home, you know? And I, and I went from uh, away from it and um, now I'm ready to come back and bring San Jose in the mat and back on the map. And as gym as ever, and it just happens to be here in my hometown. So I think it's, I think it's the time and it was right. I think, yeah. So yes, I'm coming home. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, we're and then you already AKA. had a lot of friends on the AKA team, right? Like you have, you've been training with some of those people for years. Like, um, you know, Brianna, right. And then you have like, uh, like the smaller guys, they call them <laughs> Adam Antoline calls them uh, little people doing big things. But like they're great for for females to train with, obviously. So like um, Aunt Anthony Doe and uh, and that that crew. Well, it's see the interesting thing what ended up happening. I feel like um, a lot of those guys I do know from previously, even if we fought in the in the you know amateur circuit. So we knew of each other. I think the interesting thing is like um, I know that a lot of them also started in different gyms that were here in the local Bay Area, and I feel ultimately everybody made the decision to go to AKA. So it's great because like now we do have a lot of, a, a good group, a good group of the smaller, um, you know, guys on the team, which, um, when I first started, uh, MMA, I was actually training here in San Jose and, um, I was looking for a more professional gym to go switch at. And of course, AKA was there, but at the time it was just like all the big guys, you know, just like, and I didn't really see any small guys there. And I was like, well, team up, well, obviously they got all the small guys. So Sacramento, I was like, let's just go over there. So, um, uh, I was really happy. I was, I'm very extremely grateful that I started there. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, AK is, uh, I'm, I'm, man. Um, yeah, it's been great. I was a little, just trying to figure things out. And since I've been coming these last like month or two there, everybody has been welcoming and everybody's like excited to have me there, especially me being from San Jose. And, um, no, it's been great, man. Everybody's been there with like open arms and I'm really excited obviously bummed out this whole quarantine because I can't train with them but 
once training is back, I'm pretty sure that I'm probably going to tear up walking into the gym just because, um, you know, I'm back, you know, I'm back to be myself. Like that was the hardest part, like not having a team for like about a year, really a wow. solid team at least. So, mm -hmm. so I'm excited to get that. I mean, obviously got to slow down, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Once these doors open, once the quarantine is done, we're going to get back to work and, you know, doing big things. So I actually met you last year in um, Dustin Poirier fight camp because you came to train. So now this will be your second time in one of Habib's camps. I know I've, a lot of people come to visit, even like people fly from other countries whenever Habib is in camp. So I'm just used to like ha having like other fighters come in to the gym whenever he's in camp. So how, how, what did you think about, I mean, obviously the gym completely changes when he's in town, he brings his whole entourage and everything is completely packed. So what did you think about this camp, this Habib fight camp versus the last Habib fight camp or when he's in town versus like the average day to day? I mean, I think it's great. One of the, uh, it's, when I came down that one time, I think it was just for a little bit. I was helping my friend get ready for one of his up and coming fights and I was visiting in town. And so it just happened to be that, you know, Khabib was in this fight camp. And, um, I mean, I definitely seen the energy that comes when he's around, you know, I feel like he, he pushes the, the level and energy in that room. He makes everybody work harder. We do extra credit work after, you know what I mean? And, and it's awesome. I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, because it pushes me, to work harder. So I love the energy. Um, this time, it, obviously, it was going to be different because I was actually training there on the mat alongside them. And um, man, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Like, it just pushed me hard. I was excited. I was like, man, I'm excited to be, you know, have my fight camp while he has his fight camp, you know? He fights a week before me and then I fight a week after. And it's, dude, it's awesome. I, I really, I really enjoy when he's in there. Definitely. I mean, not that the, the guys don't work, hard all year round there at the gym with Khabib or not but there's definitely a different type of energy when he's in town for sure and let's see so you're you were going to be cornered by Ron Kessler our jiu-jitsu head jiu-jitsu instructor American Elite Grappling how did you hook up with Ron <laughs> well um I know a lot of the like guys obviously I've seen them they were around I was trying to like kind of see you know, who were the coaches there at AK? Cause there's a lot of them, you know? And, um, of course he's being like the main, you know, head jujitsu, um, head jujitsu instructor, but also he's got, you know, he's got a background in, you know, in mixed martial arts as well. You know, he's a, he's an MMA fighter and, um, he is super smart and, you know, he's really smart. And, um, yeah, I kind of just talked to Hav a little bit, a little bit. And I was like, Hey, you know, who do you think I should work with or who you think would be a good fit, you know? Um, and he definitely, obviously right off the bat was like, okay, Ron, for sure. You know? So, um, definitely I, I talked to him and he was all on board about it. Um, I think it's, no, it's, it's awesome. He's, he's a great coach, you know, great person too. And he's been doing his best to make sure that I'm making this transition. Um, and, uh, you know, the best way that I can, and he's trying to make it as comfortable as possible. You know, it's great. I, I, I love like one of the things that he was like saying, you know, he wanted to talk about like, you know, what do I do like in training? And he's like, oh, like, he's like, I don't want to change stuff. He's like, I want you to be comfortable with telling me the things that you enjoy doing, because obviously it, it's working for you. Otherwise you wouldn't be where you're at if it wasn't. So um, I like that. I like that. He's not going to be like, okay, yeah, F everything else you were doing everything you were doing is wrong. I'm the one that you need it. You know, it's all, you know, so it's, it's awesome, man. I'm really lucky that, um, I was able to have him on board. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking to definitely have him in my corner for a very, very long time. Yeah. He's yeah. great. He's a wonderful strategist. He's there all the time too, because he runs his own program. So yeah, we love Ron. Ron's amazing. Mm -hmm. 